Good morning, Lighthouse! Wow, today is April 3rd, the first Sunday of April. And I would like to welcome everyone right now. Are you excited to worship and receive the Word of the Lord today? If you are, why don't you comment down below and also greet our brothers and our sisters. Speaking of our brothers and our sisters, I would like to greet our brothers and sisters at City Gate. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. And of course, to all our Lighthouse region from the north to the south, comment down also below mga kapatid. And why don't you greet our brethren? You know what? I am excited this morning because we're going to continue our preaching series, The God of the Bible. And Pastor Jojo later will talk about 2 Timothy. I would like to also remind you that today is Communion Sunday. So while we wait for the service, maaari po ba din nating i-ready na rin natin ang mga elemento? Our bread, our juice, or our wine. Today is a very special Sunday because I know the Lord has a word for us. So if you are, why don't you just lift up your hands and let's just have a quick prayer. Let's ask the presence the sweet presence of the Lord to sweep us over today. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. We are excited for this Sabbath day. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice. Even though we are watching online, oh God, Lord, we will shout with the loudest praise so our neighbors will hear, our enemy below us will hear the victory of Jesus in our lives, oh God. Lord, would you be with us? Holy Spirit, would you comfort us, strengthen us today, O Lord? And as we give you our best praise and worship, let it be a sweet sound right now. Let it be a sweet aroma that will come up to your very throne room, O Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Why don't we stand up and let's worship our Heavenly Father. Yeah. 
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire
Hallelujah, Lord. We welcome you in this place, O God. O Lord, our Prince of Peace, Lord, our Comforter, Lord. We welcome you in this place, Lord. We bask in your presence, Lord. We run to you, Lord, our shelter, our place of refuge, O God. Lord, wherever this video finds my brother or my sister right now, whether you are in your homes, in your living rooms, in your bedrooms, in your kitchen, or even some of us may find this worship service in their sick beds. Wherever you are, my friend, let the peace of God, let His comfort envelop you right this very moment. Lord, we draw out the noise. We draw out the noise, O God. We draw out the noise, Lord. We draw out and set aside any distraction, Panginoon. We set aside any depression, O God. We set aside any anxiety that we are feeling right now, O God. And let your overwhelming presence, Lord, I declare, O God, that your spirit will move freely in their homes. Lord, let your presence be felt by my brother and my sister right now. Let your comfort, let your hands, let your healing hands be upon their bodies right now. Lord, we just sang that beautiful song. Lord, na mananatili kami, Panginoon, sa iyong lilim, Lord. In the quietness of our rooms, Lord. In the quietness of our prayer closets, O God. We run to you and we seek your refuge, Lord. Let just your, your peace, Lord, and your comfort clear our minds, clear our hearts, and let your overwhelming peace cover us, overwhelm us, envelop us, Lord, so we can continue to focus and fix our eyes on you, Jesus. And Lord, today, as we continue this service, as we listen to a very powerful message from you that is going to be channeled through our senior pastor, this worship service. Kapatid, ating buksan ang ating isip, ang ating mga puso, ang ating makakamay para tanggapin ang kanyang mensahe ngayong umaga, Panginoon. And so we, Lord, Lord, we pray that you will continue to speak to us this very morning, O God. And so we rejoice we continue to shout our highest praise, Lord. We continue to give back all the honor, all the glory, and all of our love, all of our focus, all of our attention to you, Father. You deserve our everything. You deserve our highest praise. You deserve our highest honor because you are a God that is faithful. You are a God that is peaceful. You are the Prince of Peace. And so we claim that today and we declare that today over our hearts, over our families, over our communities, over our church, and over our nation. Maraming salamat for your presence, for your comfort. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. Isang mapagpalang umaga pumuli sa ating lahat. And uh, I hope and I pray that you are all well and safe and healthy as you join us in our online worship service this particular Sunday. It's another blessed Sunday. It's another glorious Sunday to celebrate and worship our God. And as you prepare your hearts and your hands 
and your wallets to give back to the Lord, allow me to share a, a story and a uh, report on what the Lord has been doing in our community and in our church. Alam niyo po, as you know, that the vision that started with Pastor Albert, yung vision na to have and to plant a lighthouse in every region of the Philippines. At ito po ay naipagpatuloy ni Pastor Mark at ngayon pinagpapatuloy ni Pastor Leo at ni Pastor June and the rest of our national office team. At uh, marami po ang nakakaalam sa atin na ang isa pa pang uh, parte, isang malaking parte ng Pilipinas ay wala pa pong Lighthouse Church and that is in Mindanao. We have been praying, we have been kneeling and asking the Lord to open opportunities for us to be able to start and join His ministry in Mindanao. At um, I'm here to say that we have begun our process of planting a lighthouse church in Mindanao, specifically in Davao City. And um, two weeks ago, um, I was blessed and privileged to uh, join Pastor Leo. Uh, we spent a week in Davao City to spy the land and to see uh, the ministry opportunities that is available in, in Davao City and also connect to some of our friends and, and families in the church that is either has relocated in Davao City or those na naabot through our marketplace ministry at yung iba pang mga uh, family uh, and friends na nandoon sa Davao City. Alam niyo po, uh, Lighthouse Family, this particular uh, ministry time is also a personal journey for me and my wife. Alam niyo po, Davao City, since we got married in 2014, Davao City, for some reason, has already been in our hearts kami ng aking mag-asawa. But, you know, life happened a year after we were blessed with our eldest son, our first child, and then our second child arrived and the third and in those span of years and in between we also um, went through several uh, mountaintops and, and valley experiences and little did we know that seven years later that heart and that desire for this particular city na kami po ng aking asawa we have never been to never visited Davao City Never been to that place. But somehow the Lord has been speaking to us about this particular city. And two weeks ago, I was able to visit Davao City for the very first time. At in those moments, as I wake up in the morning, I would you know, find myself walking um, around and just trying to see and, and feel what this place is all about. And I must say that Davao City feels home. Yun yung sa aking sinabi kay, kay Pastor Leo. Pastor, it feels like home. Sabi ko nga nung kami nasa mall, parang wala naman tayo sa uh, labas ng Maynila. Wag lang sila muna magsalita at doon malalaman ko na na nasa uh, Davao City ako kasi nagbibisaya na sila eh. But during our last day, we were able to gather the families, three families that we were able to meet and just connect with doon nung time namin sa Davao City. And uh, I was able to share... Um, one of my reflections during my stay over there and as you prepare your tithes and offerings, allow me to just share this encouragement 
for all of us. It comes from Isaiah 54, verses 2 to 3. Marami po sa atin ang familiar na dito sa verse na ito. And it says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. In verse 2, we are being encouraged of five action steps. Five powerful action steps. And in my reflection, and as the Lord was speaking to me on, on this particular verse, in sabi doon, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge is an encouragement for us to dream big. To dream big for the Lord. Na mangarap tayo muli kasama ating Panginoon. Alam ko, you will agree that this past two years, the pandemic has robbed us nanakaw po ng pandemyang ito ang ating pagkakataon para mangarap muli. But through this encouragement, the Lord is telling us, I am a big God, so you can dream big with me. So, Lighthouse family, dream big again. Let this enlargement, enlarge the place of your tent, be an encouragement to you to once again dream big for the Lord. Second, sabi doon, stretch your tent curtains wide. Stretch means to exercise yung mga natutulog nating mga muscles. Two years that we have stayed home, I'm sure some of us have somehow, you know, been lethargic. And to stretch is to, you know, exercise that, that muscles. And as we dream once again, that we will be able to ready ourselves for what the Lord is about to do in your life. And second, ay pangatlo po, do not hold back. Do not hold back is a reminder for us that sometimes when we do things for the Lord, when we join Him in His ministry, wherever it may be, that we sometimes must do things that we are afraid of. To come out and extend and step out of our comfort zones. And some of us, you know, have to move, literally move ourselves and our families to go to a place where the Lord is leading us. So do not hold back. Kasama po natin ang ating Panginoon. Kaya, pwede natin at kaya natin gawin yung mga bagay na tingin natin ay tayo ay natatakot gawin. Pang-apat, lengthen your cords. Lengthen takes us to put on an extra effort, to put on an extra mile for the Lord, to lengthen and to, to just extend and even try to go beyond our limits for the Lord. Kapatid, when you lengthen your cords, when you stretch yourself, when you do the extra mile, the Lord sees you. The Lord sees your efforts and He is our great rewarder. At pang, at pang lima po, strengthen your stakes. Strengthen means palakasin natin yung ating sarili. We are talking about the road to wholeness, that we are to strengthen our head, our hearts, and our hands as we do things for the Lord. At alam niyo po, mga kapatid, Davao City is ready for the harvest. It's The harvest is plenty over there in Davao City. At sa inyong pagbibigay, how is it related to giving? Because just like giving, to extend, to stretch, to lengthen our cords, to not hold back, all these are faith steps. All these are faith moves. Just like in our giving, we 
take a step of faith and know and trust in the Lord that He will do great and mighty things, that all we need to do is to take that leap of faith. And so as you prepare your tithes and offerings, you know, all of us are called to participate in the mission of the Lord here in our own country or even outside of the Philippines and reach the nations. All of us are called to participate. We are called to pray. So do pray for the church planting efforts in Davao City. Pray for us. Pray for my family as we step out of our faith, step in to where the Lord is calling us in Davao City. And some of us are called to support. And if you are being led, after we pray for your tithes and offering, after hearing today's message, if you are led by the Spirit to support our church planting efforts in Davao City and in the other parts of the nation, send us a message. Send a personal message to Pastor Leo or Pastor June. Send a personal message here over at Lighthouse page. And we will be more than willing to share with you the vision of the Lord in Davao City and in the other regions of the Philippines. So would you join me in praying for your tithes and offerings? Lord, maraming salamat, Panginoon, that you enable us. You strengthen us. You provided for us. You, you have given us our certain giftings and talents and skills, Lord, na aming ginagamit sa pagtatrabaho, sa pagninegosyo, Panginoon. But more than the skills and these gifts, Lord, we acknowledge that all of this is given by you, our Father, our great provider, Lord. So, would you bless our hearts? Would you bless our tithes and our offerings, Lord? Let this continue to stretch and multiply, Panginoon. And let your people speak to your people, O oh God, that they will be able to join, find an opportunity to join your ministry in Davao City or wherever that the Lord is impressing in their hearts, that they will be able to enlarge the place of their tents, to stretch your tent curtains wide, to not hold back, to lengthen their cords and to strengthen their stakes. Father, we submit to you and offer you our tithes and our offerings. This is yours, Lord. Pagpalain mo ang bawat isa sa aming pagbibigay. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen. Here are the ways you can give. You can drop your tithes and offering at Lighthouse Center, Monday to Sunday at 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also send your tithes and offering through digital giving. Union Bank Metro Bank Banco de Oro and RCBC If you are outside the Philippines, please send your donations through Remitly, Zoom, or Western Union using the following details. Banco de Oro and PayPal. For confirmation, please send a screenshot of your transfer to lighthouse.alabang at gmail.com. The Lord bless you for being a faithful tither and a generous giver. We are looking for volunteers to join the Lighthouse Alabang Levites. 
singers, musicians, drummer, bass guitarist, acoustic guitarist, electric guitarist, keyboardist, pianist. Open to all ages 16 years old and above, male or female. Auditions are on April 9, 2022, Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 12 noon, Lighthouse Alabang. Prepare two Christian songs, preferably one slow and one fast. Prepare for an interview. For inquiries or clarifications, contact us through the following. Facebook Messenger, Renza Portal. Phone, 0906-480-5458. Zero nine one five zero seven one seven one seven eight. Isang pinagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat, Lighthouse Family, City Gate Family. Thank you for joining us in today's online worship service. It was good to see all of you two Sundays ago. At labis po natin ipinagbubunye ang privilege na ibinibigay sa atin ng Panginoon ngayon na pwede na tayong magkita-kita face-to-face. But we are enjoying as well our online community. And so if this is your first time na kayo po ay nakarating dito sa Lighthouse Online Worship Service, no, na wala pong aksidente or coincidence sa kaharian ng Diyos. Ito po ay nilaan at niloob ng Diyos na magkakilala tayo ngayong araw. My name is Pastor Jojo Baldo. And in behalf of the community, welcome to our online worship service. Salamat, Pastor Carlo, for opening us in prayers. Thank you, dear Levites, for always ushering us into the magnificent presence of the Lord. And thank you, Pastor Maki. Nakaka-encourage ang reports na binitbit sa atin ni Pastor Maki kung paanong nandun na ang gawain ng Panginoon sa Davao. And we are now joining the works of Jesus Christ in bringing the redemptive news of the Lord to the people in Mindanao. Ito po ay pagsasakatuparan na ibinigay na pangitain ng Panginoon sa Lighthouse many years back to have a lighthouse in every region. And so Pastor Maki, Pastor Leo, good job. Lighthouse family, please let us support our Davao outreach through our prayers and through our generous giving. Salamat din sa announcement na binigay ng ating Levites at si Segundohan Kolompo. Ngayong April 9, uh, Saturday, magkakaroon po ng Levites auditions. This coming Saturday na po yan, this coming week, sa 9.30 in the morning dito po sa Lighthouse Alabang. Ang nire-request lang ni na Pastor Ren and Pastor Doc Jaja ay mag-prepare lang tayo ng dalawang Christian songs, isang fast at isang slow song, and then just bring your background music MP3, whatever, karaoke version. Gusto lang marinig ng ating mga Levites pastors kung ano ang range ng ating vocals para alam nila kung saan ka ilalagay sa ministry. I've always joked about this, pero sabi nga nila, every joke is half meant. Alam po ninyo kung talagang binayayaan lang ako ng Panginoon ng gift of music or gift of singing. Matagal na po akong nag-Levites dito sa Lighthouse. Pero ganun pa man, nagpapasalamat tayo na punong-puno ang lighthouse ng talents para magbigay ng papuri sa ating Panginoon. So, please, join us, register online, leave us a message sa ating chat box para malaman po natin na we will expect you this coming April 9 at 9.30 in the morning here in Lighthouse Alabang. Thank you din, Pastor Carlo, for announcing. Uulitin ko lang po. Kung wala pa kayong communion elements, this is a good time as well to prepare some drinks and some bread para mamaya po at the end of the preaching, tayo po ay magko-communion sabay-sabay online. Now, if this is your first time to be with us, napakaganda po ng inyong dating dahil tayo po ay nasa gitna ng ating uh, preaching series on knowing the God of the Bible. Last Sunday, napakaganda ng exposition ni Pastor June Rupa about First Timothy. Ngayon po, atin pong tatalakayin ang Second Timothy. So I pray na meron kayong mga Bible apps sa inyong mga cell phones or you have the actual Bible in your hands right now while you are facing the TV or the screen on your computers 
or even maybe your cell phones. So why don't you flip now to 2 Timothy, and I have rightfully entitled this sermon, God, Sustainer of Our Heritage of Faith. Shall we bow down our heads and pray? Salamat Panginoon for speaking unto us all through these many Sundays. Mula pa ng kasagsagan ng pandemya hanggang ngayon po na nagluluwag na ang restrictions, patuloy ang pag-aaral namin sa Lighthouse. Sa kung sino nga ba ang Diyos na aming sinasamba at wala kaming ibang pagkukuhanan ng kaalaman kundi ang inyong mga salitari naman, Panginoon. So today, kausapin niyo po ang bawat kapatid na nanonood sa online worship service nito. At alam namin, Panginoon, ngayong araw, mangungusap kayo sa bawat isa sa amin. Bukas po ang aming puso at isip. Taniman niyo po, Lord, ng mga butil ng inyong pananampalataya para kami po ay lalong kumapit at lalong yumabong sa aming paglago sa inyo. Come now, Holy Spirit. Speak to every family. Reach now every family. Walk now into this living room or this bedroom for the glory of Jesus alone. And everyone will type, Amen! Ang ganda po pag tayo ay nag engage Kaya sulat lang kayo ng sulat dyan ng inyong mga emojis para alam ko po na tayo ay nagkakasama-sama. May tanong po ako sa inyo. Naitanong ko na rin po to, I think many Sundays back. Have you ever been in the bedside of a dying person? Ano ang mga huling kataga na narinig ninyo sa minamahal na yun? I would make a bet na yung kung ano man ang narinig nyo sa kanila, kung ano man ang kanilang mga nabitawang salita, hanggang ngayon po ay hindi nyo nakakalimutan. Yung eksaktong moment, yung eksaktong phrase, yung eksaktong emosyon that was evoked in you while that dying person was ebbing away habang siya ay binabawian ng buhay. Pangalawang tanong po, kung kayo naman po ang dumating na sa punto na kayo ay magbabalik na sa kaharian ng Panginoon sa langit, ano kaya ang magiging huling mga salita mo? Napagtanto niyo na po ba ito? Have you ever thought of what would be your last words that you will have the privilege of speaking? Now, bakit ko po itinatanong to? Dahil meron pong mga kamatayan na dumarating na hindi natin sukatakalain na darating pala. Na wala na tayong chance na makapagbitaw ng, ng pagmamahal or pagpapatawad or pagpasa, pagpapasalamat. Every now and then, may mga taong binibigyan ng Panginoon ng privilege of being able to land smoothly and enter into death. Kaya nagkakaroon sila ng mga huling habilin. So, importante po na habang tayo ay buhay pa, tayo po ay hindi maging maramot. Huwag po tayong magpigil. Huwag po nating rendahan yung ating puso't isip. Kung meron tayong gustong sabihin sa mga minamahal natin, sabihin na po natin. And I pray na habang ngayon tayo ay malakas pa at iniisip natin na tayo ay mabibigyan pa ng buhay at ng Diyos ng napakarami pang taon ahead of us. That every day, we get to live with this consciousness that because we don't hold our lives in our hands, we don't dictate the end of our lives, every moment is a chance for us to let our loved ones know how they truly matter unto us. Meron po akong pinag-aaralan na isang saint ng pangalan po ay si Saint Polycarp. Siya po ay nabuhay noong 69 hanggang 156 A.D. Kung makikita niyo po sa ating picture. Siya po ay isang natatanging saint na kinanonize ng church. Unang-una dahil isa po siya sa mga legitimate na naging disciples ni Apostle John. Yes, the original disciple of Jesus. And through the Apostle John, Polycarp came to know the Lord. And namatay na nga po si Apostle John and Polycarp continued in the faith sa kanyang pangangaral. Kung ano man ang kanyang narinig, kung ano man ang kanyang napatunayan at 
natanggap mula sa dakilang apostol na si Juan, ito po ay kanyang pinalaganap at itinuro, ibinahagi sa mga mananampalataya during those early years of Christianity. But you know the rest of history, our saints of old went through the most vicious of persecutions, the most vicious of attacks from the enemies of the faith. Hindi po katiyakan na dahil kayo ay nagsisilbi sa Panginoon, tayo po ay mai-exempt na sa buhay na walang pasakit. Alam natin na ang, ang kapaitan ng buhay is part of the narrative of our Christian faith. The question ng alang that will differentiate the people of the faith is how you face the reality of death. And it was told na habang siya ay tinatali sa poste at nilalagin nila ng panggatong ang kanyang kapaligiran para siya ay sunugin na buhay. Sabi sa kanya ng proconsul in that part of Smyrna or ancient Greece, Swear, urged the proconsul, Reproach Christ and I will set you free. Yun lang naman ang kondisyon. Isumpa mo, talikuran mo, i-disown mo yung pinapaniwalaan mong Kristo at ngayon din, Tatag na ko ang apoy at ikay aking palalayain. Hindi ka na kailangang magdusa dahil sa pananampalataya mo. At ito yung sagot ni St. Polycarp. Eighty-six years have I served him. And he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my King and my Savior? Those were the last words of St. Polycarp. And what a glorious epitaph na pwede nating balikan. Kaya hanggang ngayon, ang mga Christians in Smyrna in Greece, they celebrate the birthday, no, the death day of St. Polycarp. Kung kailan, hanggang sa kanyang pagtanda, 86 years old, sinasabi niyang, wala akong sapat na dahilan para aking ipagkalulo, para aking kalimutan, para aking talikdan ang Diyos na aking kinilala. Dahil wala siyang ginawa kundi maging mabuti sa akin. Those are famous and those are glorious last words. Now, why am I dealing with last words? Kasi po ang konteksto ng 2 Timothy is about the last words of St. Paul. Alam na po natin ang kwento na nung si St. Paul ay nagkaroon ng mga missionary journeys, in one of those journeys, namit po niya ang isang batang disipulo na si Timothy. At si Timothy sa kalaunan, ay kikwento ko mamaya, ay naging pastor, a very young pastor in a place called Ephesus. Kaya meron pong letter to the Ephesians. At habang sinusulat ni Apostle Paul ang Second Timothy, siya po ay nasa Rome. At sa kanyang katiyakan na ito na malamang sa malamang ang kanyang mga huling saglit. Ilang beses nang nakulong si Apostle Paul. He has faced, he has tasted, he, has, he had experienced being in prison many times over. But at that moment, the Apostle Paul knew with certainty because the Spirit revealed it to him that he would not come out of this prison free. So he wrote from this lonely, dark, dungeon of a prison in Rome to this young pastor in Ephesus for many reasons. Number one, to ask Timothy to come visit him. Sa mga huling saglit ng buhay natin, ang ating nililong ay ang presensya ng ating mga minamahal. I'll talk about that more later. But at the same time, it was the desire of the Apostle Paul Na in these last few moments, last few days or weeks of his life, that he would be able to impart unto Timothy. Banghuling habilin ng isang spiritual father sa kanyang spiritual son. Para nang sa ganoon, si Timothy ay hindi panghinaan ng kalooban. Balikan lang natin sandali ang kwento ni Timothy. Sa Acts 16, the Apostle Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra where a disciple named Timothy lived. Ito po ang simula, the genesis of the faith walk of Timothy, whose mother was a Jewish, Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. 
But the brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Diyan tayo magsimula sa kwento about Timothy. A young person na dahil sa impluensya ng kanyang mga magulang, ng kanyang nanay, most especially, na mananampalataya. The father was not so much highlighted, maybe because the father was not much of a believer. Or maybe the father did not relinquish or did not turn away from the Greek religion which was polytheistic. Inimbikan, inimbakan, pinagbuhusan ng malalim at mayamang katuroan ang buhay ni Timothy mula nung siya ay bata pa. So that when the Apostle Paul ay napadaan siya sa region ng Derbe at Lystra, narinig na niya ang magandang pangalang kanilang sinasambit at ang magandang reputasyon patungkol kay Timothy. And so you have heard countless sermons encouraging the young people, and I will do it again today for the young people. Magpapasalamat tayo for the investments and the rich sowing of seeds of faith in the hearts of our young people through the older generations. And because of that, even at a young age, your name already can bear the reputation of being a true follower of Christ. At yun ang nangyari, nakasama na ni Apostle Paul si Timothy sa kanyang mga missionary journeys. Kaya, nung prinit si Pastor June last Sunday, nalaman natin na sa 1 Timothy pa lang, chapter 1, verse 3, the Apostle Paul, when he went to Macedonia, urged Timothy to stay in Ephesus. Kaya naiwan si Timothy sa Ephesus because he had a mission to fulfill so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer. Hindi ko babalikan ng sermon ni Pastor June, pero napaka-powerful ng charge ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy. Merong mga tao at merong mga nilalang na hindi magandang layunin, lalo't patungkol sa ating pananampalataya. Nagpapakalat sila ng fake news. Kaya Timothy, sila ay yung kakaharapin. But here is a, kung itatabi ko lang ang charge ni Paul to Timothy at ang kanyang kwento tungkol sa kanyang sarili, you will immediately notice this difference or this parallelism. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, na pernich ni Pastor June last week, verse 18, Paul would say, Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them, you may fight the good fight. Now, ilang years ang pagitan between 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. The, B- the Bible scholars disagree or are not in agreement with the exact date, but there is a consensus that it must have been about four years. So four years ago, sinulatan na ni Apostle Paul si Timothy, fight the good fight. Ang ibinigay sa inang Panginoon na uh, pastoral call in Ephesus is a good fight of faith. This is worthy of your investments of the prime time of your life. That's what I always tell our young pastors here in church. Pastor Carlo, Pastor Nikki, Pastor Ivan, Pastor Josh, I would command our young pastors that at the young age, they have decided not only to follow Jesus, but to donate the best years of their lives. Not in the pursuit of money or business, not in the pursuit of fame and power, but to pursue the call of making the name of Jesus known. Why? Because this is the good fight of faith. Now flip to Second Timothy, yung ating topic ngayong araw. When Paul was already certain na hindi na siya magtatagal sa mundong to, look at this. Ang kanyang report sa kanyang sarili, sabi niya, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Famous phrases from 2 Timothy. While he was charging and encouraging this young pastor to make sure that they wage, that he wages this warfare that is worthy of every ounce of his energy, Paul would now look at himself in the mirror and tell his spiritual son, 
But as for me, my time is almost up. But I have this good report to tell you. Meron akong karapatan pagsabihan kang lumaban dahil ako ibinagay ko ang lahat sa laban na ito. So the big idea of 2 Timothy really in the original context was this. That Paul knew that Timothy's faith walk would be met with much hardship. So Paul assured Timothy that his heritage of faith was strong and deep enough to keep him from giving up. That truth, those truths that the Apostle Paul would now pour unto Timothy is exactly the same truth that the Word of God is now being poured unto you, my friend. Because just like Timothy, now you also know. Now you can also say, I understand, gets ko yan, Pastor Jojo. Hindi dahil ako'y naging kristyano, naging madali na ang buhay ko. As a matter of fact, you may be wrestling with an illness or maybe you are watching a loved one that is wrestling with this illness that seems to be winning over this fight. So just like the Apostle Paul, let me speak this word of prophecy unto you. That God is assuring you today by the power of the Holy Spirit through His Word that your anchorage of faith, your heritage of faith, yung inimbak na pananampalatayang inirigalo rin naman sa ng Panginoon is strong enough. It is deep enough to keep you from falling, to keep you from giving up. Second Timothy is the book of Paul's last words and those last words are words of encouragement, of prodding on, of pushing this young pastor as the Word of God is pushing us now. This is no time for us to retreat or to surrender. This is the time for us to continue fighting the good faith, to make sure that we finish the race, and to make sure that in all these years, we will keep the faith. You can type amen in our chat boxes, mga kapatid. Tatlong assurances ang binibigay ng Apostle Paul. Tatlong heritage of faith na kanyang ipinapaalala kay Timothy. Unang-una, sabi niya, one heritage of faith that you have is, this is a faith that has been handed down from generation to generation. A faith down the generations. Why is this significant? Because sometimes when hardships beset us when so many pains engulf us. Napakadali pong magbumigay sa temptation to think na parang ako yata ang malas sa henerasyon ng aming pamilya. Maganda naman yung buhay ng mga lolo't lola ko, ng aking mga magulang. Pero bakit sa akin pang time nagkaroon ng ganunong klaseng mga sagalot? At kung mahinahina ang iyong pananampalataya, Pag naudyukon ka ng mga boses na galing sa labas, malamang may magsasabi sa'yo, eh kasi naging Christian ka pa eh. Tuloy, ang buhay mo ngayon ay minamalas. And we are prone to that, mga kapatid. That in the weakness of our human nature, we can second guess, number one, the decisions that we have made, or even second guess the will of the Lord in your life. The Apostle Paul saw that in Timothy, na pwede siyang mag-catapult into timidity and fear. But the Apostle Paul would now say, Timothy, be assured that what you have right now, your faith, is a faith that has been handed down unto you from generations upon generations of faithful people. It is now upon you. That's why the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, would remind Timothy, he says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. Shout out po para sa mga lolo at lola, sa mga nanay at tatay. Kung meron po kayong naalala ngayong mga pangalan ng mga lolo at lola ninyo, mga parents niyo, pakilagay po sa ating chat box. I love you, ma. I love you, lolo. I love you, lola. Dali yung po ang narrative of faith ni Timothy na ipinapaalala sa kanya ng 
Apostle Paul. Bakit? Dahil ang paalala ay gamot sa taong nakakalimot. At ang mga habi ng buhay pwedeng mag-cause ng amnesia even in our faith. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, itong pananampalatayang meron ka, nakita ko to, nakita mo to unang-una sa, lolo, sa lola mong si Luis. At hindi lang kay lola, pati sa nanay mong si Eunice. Si Lois at saka si Eunice, sila po ay mga Jewish women. They must have been part of the diaspora na nangyari noong Old Testament. Noong nagkawatak-watak sila dahil umatake ang mga Assyrians, ang mga Babylonians. Di ba? Naikwento natin yan last year. And they were now in dispersion in all over Asia. And maybe their family, as Jewish people, they went to this part of, uh, of Lystra or Derbe. And there they tried to find a community. And maybe by force of circumstances, they got into intermarriage. Kaya sila ay napakasal or napangasawa nila ay isang Gregong lalaki na naging tatay ni Timothy. Pero hindi kailanman bumitaw si Lois at saka si Eunice. Hindi sila bumitaw sa angkorahe ng pananampalatay ng mga Hudyo. This monotheistic religion that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And throughout the life, di ko alam kung single mom si Eunice, but all through the life of Timothy, he received instruction upon instruction from Lola and from Mama about the faith that they have in Yahweh, in Jehovah, in El Shaddai, in all these wondrous works of the God of Israel that has sustained them all through these years. Ano ang ininherit ni Timothy kay Lola, Lois, and Mother Eunice? Number one, sabi niya, sincere faith. Ang nakita ko sa'yo, Timothy, ay ang kadalisayan ng yung pananampalataya. Yung word na sincere is from the Greek word anopokritos. Ano pokritos from the word pokritos meaning hypocrisy. Ano means without hypocrisy or unhypocritical. A behavior that is free from from hidden agenda or even selfish motives. And the word faith is from the Greek word pisteos, and it really means. Ang pananampalataya daw is to be persuaded of what is trustworthy. Tinanggap ni Timothy yun sa kanyang lola at kanyang mama. Unang-una, isang pananampalataya na hindi hypocritical. Hindi pananampalataya na puro lamang sa nguso pero wala naman sa puso. Hindi pananampalataya na puro lamang ngawa pero kulang sa gawa. Hindi pananampalataya na maganda sa Facebook pero sa turay na buhay pala ay hindi. It is unhypocritical. It's a faith that is defined by integrity ng behavior ni Timothy na namanas na kanyang mananampalatayang lolo at lola at kanyang nanay ay isang pananampalatayang hindi selfish. And he got persuaded by this. Persuaded in one sense that maybe Timothy saw this in the lives of his predecessors, lolo, lola, mommy, or tatay, kung naging believer ang kanyang tatay. But at the same time, we know that that faith is gift, is a gift from the Lord. That the Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so persuaded Timothy that this belief system, itong pag-asang meron ka sa Diyos, is trustworthy. And now, when the Apostle Paul came and introduced to Timothy the faith towards Jesus Christ, the reality of the incarnation of the Messiah that the Israelites had been waiting for. Something opened in the eyes of Timothy. Ito yung matagal nang itinuturo sa akin ng aking lola, ng aking nanay. Kaya sabi ni Paul sa 2 Timothy chapter 3, As for you, Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise 
for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. From childhood, did you get that? Mula pa sa kanyang pagkabata, Timothy has been, had been exposed to the sacred writings. Ano yung sacred writings? The Bible. At ano yung Bible na yun? Old Testament. Old Testament na binuklat at binasa at minemorize ni Lois at saka ni Eunice at ipinasa nila kay Timothy. And that's why the heart of Timothy was ready for the gospel about Jesus Christ. Nung nilapatan ng banal na spirito ng presensya ang puso ni Timothy, ito'y sumambulat sa kanyang diwa. And now Timothy was a force to reckon with because his was a life that was ready for the use of the Master. Lolo, Lola, Mama and Papa, wag po tayong manghinawa na mag-invest ng oras para i-train ang ating mga po, ang ating mga anak. Yes, meron po tayong mga teachers sa school. Yes, meron po tayong kids' church dito sa Lighthouse. Malapit na na pong mag-reopen pag pinayagan na po tayo ng gobyerno ng kids' church ministry. Yes, we have pastors who will always endeavor to teach our young people the word of the Lord. But Lolo, Lola, I would just like to affirm that you are the best teachers of your grandchildren. Mama and Papa, you could be the best teachers of your children. Why? Because you have the opportunity to showcase unto your children not only the power of the word, but the power of a word that is lived out in everyday life. Kami mga pastor, nakikita lamang ng inyong mga anak, ng ating mga youth, tuwing Sunday, tuwing hot rock, tuwing young adults night. Kaya pwede nang makita nila sa amin yung aming kagandahang side lang. Hindi nila nakikita yung aming mga choices. Hour by hour, moment by moment. Pero tatay, nanay, kasama ka nila sa kotse. Nakikita ka nila kung paano ka nagre-react kung merong nagkakat sa iyong pagdadrive sa EDSA o kaya sa Alabang Zapote. Paanong binibless mo yung mga taong dapat ay minumura mo na, ito ay pinagpapala mo pa. Paanong isusubo mo na lamang, ibinibigay mo pa sa pulubi ang yung huling subo. Nakikita ng mga anak mo yan. And so, you have the opportunity and the privilege to connect your children the generational faith that you've always enjoyed as a family. But not only that, the Apostle Paul also included himself in the picture kung paano kasama siya sa kwento na ito. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2, sabi ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Ang tawag natin dito sa discipleship group ng Lighthouse, 4G, four generations. Si Apostle Paul ang nag-disciple kay Timothy. Two generations na yun. Sabi niya kay Timothy, Timothy, yung narinig mo sa akin, ipasa mo rin sa iba. Third generation, na ipapasa rin naman sa iba yung natutunan nila. Discipleship is always generational. Ganun din naman ang nangyari. Mula kay Grandmother Lois, ipinasa kay Mother Eunice, ipinasa kay Timothy, dinagdagan pa, ginatungan pa ni Apostle Paul. And now Timothy was pastoring this great church in Ephesus and now he was multiplying himself and now dedicating his life for the spreading of the gospel of the Lord. Faith through generations. We can only give thanks unto the Lord. Na meron tayong mga lolo at lola, meron tayong mga pastors, meron tayong mga missionaries, meron tayong mga kids' church teachers who labor Sunday in, Sunday out na maitatak sa ating mga anak pag dumating sila sa kids' church. Hindi para aluin, hindi para gawing daycare center ang ating kids' church, but to embed in our children the Word of God that our children will never be able to recover from it. Ibig sabihin that the Word of God will be in the hearts of our children for the rest of their lives. And when they hear the mandate of the Lord, 
to be a four generational discipler. Alam nila, hindi para lamang sa sarili niya yun. Ipapasa niya sa iba na ipapasa rin naman sa iba kung ano ang natutunan nila. Timothy, God has given you this rich heritage of faith. My friend, produkto ka ng napakayamang heritage of faith. Hold on to it. The Lord is your greatest advocate. Second point, sabi ni Paul kay Timothy, Timothy, never ever be discouraged, my son. Why? Because your heritage of faith is the kind of faith that can be seen in words and actions. Dadagdagan ko lang yung aking kanini pang sinasabi. That people have heard the word and people are doing and fulfilling the word. Yan po ang kapangyarihan ng isang tunay na Christian disciple. Ang kapangyarihan na alam mo merong mga nakasunod sa iyong yapak. I was once talking to my children. Sabi ko, mga anak, ingat kayo kung saan nyo dinadala ang inyong mga paa. Or ingat kayo kung saan kayo dinadala ng inyong mga paa. And may ever wise, maliit na mama na si Caleb, sabi niya, Dad, I think you should be the one to be careful. Sabi ko, Why? Sabi niya, because we're just following you. Now, that's a good rebuke, and that's a good correction, but that is also a good encouragement. My children are just following me. I can always deliver unto them a 45-minute sermon na sila'y mabuhay ng tapat. And I should, by words, right? But the best sermon that I can ever give them is to show our children Day after day, come in, Sister Rose. Moment by moment, how we love God, how we love each other, how we love them, how we love the church, how we love the people of the Lord, even the people that are not in the church, our children see that hopefully in us. And if these words are transmitted always into actions, our children will never have a difficulty reconciling faith. Because the greatest turn-off in the lives of many children are seeing their own parents, seeing their own pastors, seeing their own church leaders so glib, so eloquent in the stage, so enjoying the gift of gab na talagang hindi na uubusan ng silatang masasabi. But they would always be so quick to speak pot a phony from a mile away. Sasabihin nila, magaling lang yung magsalita. Pero hindi yan makikita sa kanyang gawa. Ouch! But for Paul, he had every confidence that Timothy had been given models of faith. And that's why Paul would say, Timothy, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And then in this famous Chapter of 2 Timothy, Paul would now expose it on three word pictures. Sabi niya, no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. And then Paul would say, think over what, is, what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Paul was now making use of the power of words, the power of analogy, para maintindihan ng isang batang pastor, ng isang batang disciple, kung ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng pananampalataya, the imagery of a soldier, at malamang nakikita ni Timothy yan, because he lived in a Roman saturated world, even in Greece, that the centurions would have a hundred soldiers under him. And these soldiers would have no other mission but to salute to their officer and to fulfill the wishes of the officer. And so, Timothy, sabi ni Paul, ganun ka rin dapat because you are a soldier of Christ. You have already forsaken, you have already relinquished all your civilian affairs in this life. Why? Because as a soldier of Christ, your eyes are on the commander-in-chief. Kung ano ang gusto ng commander-in-chief, yun lang ang gagawin mo. But Timothy, just like here in Greece, you see those athletes? Sa Greece, nagsimula ang Olympics. Nakita mo yung mga 100-meter dash, 
sprinters, nakikita mo yung mga pole vaulters, nakikita mo yung mga boxers, nakikita mo yung mga archers. These athletes, they are disciplined. They know the rules. They follow a strict regimen of waking up in the morning and eating the right food and following the rules, lest they be disqualified. Timothy, you are also like an athlete. You are in a race. You are boxing against opponents. You are competing against the devil. You are competing even against yourself. Just like an athlete, embrace that sense of discipline, Timothy. You are in here for the long haul. Pag ang athlete, kumuya ko lamang yan ng isa dalawang linggo, tutubuan na ng bilbilyan at ang kanyang performance sa badminton court will be so affected. Ang boxer, hindi lamang mag-jogging yan ng isang linggo, ang kanyang stamina level would be reduced by about 30 to 35 percent. Timothy, you are here for the long haul. Have the discipline of an athlete. And Timothy, kita mo rin sa Greece, dito sa, sa Ephesus, na nakikita mo, right? There are so many farmers. Because Ephesus is a farming area. Kaya rich in trade. The farmers, alam mong disiplina ng farmers? Kahit na mainit, kahit umuulan, kahit bumabaha, kahit na lumalakas ang hangin, they just so believe in the power and the law of sowing and reaping. Kung merong kang itinanim, merong kang aanihin. Timothy, huwag kang panghihinawaan. Huwag kang panghihinaan ng kalooban, Timothy. Oh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, my friend. Maraming bagay na ang nag-deter sa iyong isip. Ang dami ng mga bagay ang medyo nakipag-compete sa iyong atensyon. But today, the Word of God is being given to you, my brother. You are a soldier of the Lord. You are like an athlete in this arena of faith. There is a devil that not only competes with you, but this devil will kill you given half the chance. Never let down your guards, my friend. But just like a farmer, the Lord has already set forth laws of nature na kung uobserbahan lang natin, huwag ka lang mapagod sa paghasik ng butil na yan, siguradong meron kang aanihin. Meron akong kausap na farmer. Nakita ko siya. Akala ko naghahasik siya ng butil. Pero nung nilapitan ko, may kinukuha kunwari siya sa kanyang kamay at hinahagis niya. Pero tinitinan ko ang kanyang kamay Wala naman akong nakikitang butil, pero hagis pa rin siya ng hagis. Sabi ko, Manong, anong ginagawa ninyo? Anong tinatanim ninyo? Sabi niya sa akin, Pastor, seedless. <laughs> Wala. Now, hindi ganon ang pagpa-far, mga kapatid. Wala kang aanihin kung wala kang butil na ipupunla. Words and actions, Timothy. You have seen this in me. You have seen this in your parents, in your grandparents, Timothy, remember Jesus Christ. Yan ang ultimate model mo, Timothy. Risen from the dead, the offspring of David as preached in my gospel for which, for which I am suffering. Bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Remember your parents. Remember your Lola. Remember me. But most of all, Timothy, remember Jesus Christ. The very Son of God, the Word of God that was there in the heavenlies from the beginning. Nothing that has been created that has not been created through the Word of God but Timothy, remember Jesus. He's the Word that became flesh. He could have just, you know, continued speaking powerful words from heaven. Sabi nga ni Pastor Albert, pwede naman sanang mag-mandate na lang si Lord sa kalangitan. Okay, save na kayo. Redeem na kayo. Kaya ng Panginoon? Kaya. Pero hindi yun ang kanyang ipinakita sa ating example. Jesus left the heavenlies, and became like one of us. Words and action coming together. That's why Timothy sabi ni Paul, I am now a criminal, a prisoner to this gospel. I am suffering. I am now in chains because of the majesty of Jesus Christ. 
but Timothy, I am never ashamed of this. And so you should just continue pursuing the call that is in your life. Bakit natin kailangan maalaman yun? Because the Apostle Paul had the painful experience na siya ay iniwanan ng kanyang mga kasama sa ministry. Sina Hermogenes. Pinapangalanan niya yan sa 2 Timothy. Na dahil lamang ako'y nakulong, ikinihiyan na nila ako. Dahil para bagang ang aking pagkakulong ay tanda ng hindi pagsama sa akin ng Panginoon. But remember Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ suffered for you and for me. Kaya kung meron ka mang pagdadaan ng sufferings, Timothy, hold on to the faith. The Word of God is not bound. Kung paanong sinubukang patayin si Jesus, pero siya ay muling bungam, bumangong muli. Such is the nature of the Word of God. Hindi siya kayang pigilan, hindi siya kayang bigkisin, hindi siya kayang kulungay ng kung anumang kapangyarihan meron sa mundong ito. The Word of God will do its work. Your role, my friend, is to proclaim it. And your role is whatever it is that you already have been made familiar with. Kung ano na ang alam mo, isa buhay mo lang. God will not hold you accountable for that which you do not know yet, but for the things that God already has revealed unto you. Just live it out. And this is the kind of faith that is a rich heritage that God has given you. A faith through generations and a faith through words and actions. And lastly, sabi ni Paul, Timothy, this heritage of faith is the kind of faith that continues on despite troubles and attritions. Despite troubles and tribulations. Kaya nalagay ko ang picture dyan because real sa panahon na Timothy ng mga disipulo ay pinapakain sa leon, katulad ni Polycarp. Real sa kanyang panahon na si uh, St. Peter ay crucify ng patiwarik. Na merong mga disciple hinahati, nilalagari sa gitna ang kanilang katawan. Even the Apostle Paul was known historically to have been decapitated dahil sa kanyang pananampalataya. But Timothy, kung lilingunin mo lang, kung tatanimin mo lang ang mga nakapaligid sa'yo. In the book of Hebrews, the author calls it the great cloud of witnesses. Makikita mo. This is the kind of faith na Jesus Christ, despite death, continued on. That Peter, despite the persecution, continued on. All the other saints of the ages, this is the kind of faith that will carry you through despite the troubles and the attritions and the tribulations of this world. That's why Paul would now say to Timothy in the third chapter, understand this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Wow! I suggest you take a picture of this, screenshot niyo po, or in bookmark niyo sa 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, this is an apt description not only of the generation of Timothy, but even of our generation, or even more so, our present generation. That's why Paul would say, Timothy, you are now living in troubled times, and I'm telling you now, my brothers, my sisters, we are living in troubled times. Christianity is not an in thing. Righteousness is not a popular thing. To be holy and to be blameless and to be pure is not something that your peers would applaud for you. You will be an outcast if you try to be a Christian because people in their times and even in our moments right now will love self more than God, will love money more than faith, will love pleasure more than the church. And there will be a burgeoning, ang pag, pagsabog, ang pagswell, 
ng pride, ng conceit, ng kayabangan sa buhay ng maraming tao. You will have many people that that seem to have forms of godliness, laman ng simbahan, laman ng lahat ng religious affairs nag attend Pero sabi ni Paul, but denying its power. Timothy, as a young pastor, and to you, my friend, as a young believer, know that you are in a generation like this. These are times of attrition. Maraming nawawala. Dahil maraming taong pipiliing mahalin ang mundo over and above the Lord. But Paul would say, But you, however, you have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, with persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. And Paul would say, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Timothy, your hope, your anchorage in these troubled times, in these times of attrition, is that you are also surrounded by people who have modeled the faith for you. Look at me, Timothy. You see, just um, a night, last night, we had our gathering in church and we just honored one of our elders, Brother Peter and Sister Christine. And um, as I was looking at them, I was just so struck by the truth that Lord, napaka-bless kong tao dahil mula nung ako'y magsimula sa Lighthouse almost 22, 23 years ago. Ang isa sa mga pinakaunang disciples na aking dinatnan ay si Ninang Christine at saka si Brother Peter. And for me, Hindi ko kailangan mag ng seminars upon seminars on how to be hospitable. Nakita ko at na-experience ko ang hospitality ng Kairos family. Hindi ko kailangan makarinig ng sobrang daming sermon on about generosity. Of course, I need to hear the word about generosity. But thank God, I was able to see it in the life of Brother Peter and Sister Christine. How generous they are to the people of the Lord. More so to the pastors. Hindi ko kalangan magaten ng countless seminars paano mag intercessory prayers. Pupunta lang ako sa aming intercessory room pag Wednesdays at nandun si Ninang Christine. At paano niya hinihimok ang mga ka-church para ipagdasal ang simbahan ng bansa, ang buong mundo, naintindihan ko. Salamat, Ninang Christine. Salamat, Brother Peter Kairos, for all of this. Nalam kong hindi kami may exempt sa tribulations because hindi naman buong panahon makakasama ni Paul si Timothy hindi lang lahat ng oras nandiyan sa tabi ko si Brother Peter at saka si Ninang Christine as much as I would love them always to be here beside me but there will be moments my friend that you will have to face life and it's just between you and God I pray that you go back to the scriptures because now Paul would tell Timothy all these scriptures they are breathed out by God and they are profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Ang tunay na disciple marunong mag-feed sa kanyang sarili ng salita ng Diyos. Hinihimok ni Apostol Pablo. Timothy, Mula pagkabata, familiar ka na sa scriptures, ngayong pastor ka na, ngayong lilisan ako sa mundong to, Timothy, huwag mong hihiwalayan ang salita ng Diyos. Dahil si Apostle Paul, nandito ngayon bukas wala na. Pero Timothy, ang Word of God, galing sa Panginoon. Yes, isinulat ng mga propeta. Yes, sinulat ng mga inspired writers. Pero ito ay ipinadaan ng banal na spirito sa mga kamay at puso ng tao. Pero ito ang ipinararating sa iyo. This is God breathed. Important ito for your teaching. Matuto ka ng hindi mo pa alam. For your reproof. Kung meron kang kalikuan para ikaw ay makonfront ng katotohan at ikaw ay muling magbalik. For your correction. May mali ka ng ginagawa. Papunta ka ng bangin. Ikaw ay mamamatay na. You will be corrected by the Word of God. And yes, it is also for your training so that you will be equipped in all good works. Lighthouse family. Through all the tribulations that we will go through, let us go back to the centrality of the word. 
Tatlong bagay to convince us that God truly is the sustainer of our heritage of faith. A faith down the generations. A faith in words and actions. And this faith that go on despite troubles and attritions. The word of the Lord for all of us. Now let me just wind this down for five more minutes with some practical applications. Number one, Hey, Pastor, paano ko i-apply sa buhay ko to? Number one, based on the lessons on 2 Timothy, babalikan ko lang ang ating theme, vision for this year. Wholeness. Dahil sa faith na ibinigay sa atin through the generations, through the words and actions, and through tribulations, keep your head, your heart, and your hand. Ito ang sabi ni Paul kay Timothy. Nasa chapter 4 na po tayo. As for you, be sober-minded. That's your head. Endure suffering. That's your heart. Wag kang mawawala ng kalooban, Timothy. But do the work of an evangelist. That's your hand. Fulfill your ministry. Timothy, kahit wala na ako. Timothy, kahit na ikaw ay feeling mo nag-iisa ka na lang. Wala na yung mentor mo. Wala na yung Elijah mo. Wala na yung Moses mo. Ikaw na si Joshua. Ikaw na si Elisha. At ngayon, ikaw na nga si Timothy ni Paul. Timothy, be sober-minded. Marami ng alam ang utak mo. Huwag mong pababayang magdilim ang utak mo dahil sa mga pagkabagabag, dahil sa pagkatakot. Be sober-minded. But number two, Timothy, a heart of a lion endures suffering. Remember, you're a soldier. Remember, you're an athlete. Remember, you're a farmer. Kung ano man yung suffering, sabi ni, sabi ni Paul, to be a follower of Jesus Christ is to be persecuted. Endure it. Consider it pure joy na nakakapareho mo ang kahirapang at nararanasan mo ang kahirapang dinanas ng Diyos. But Timothy, just focus on the works of your hands. Do the work of an evangelist. Marami pang taong kailangan abutin, Timothy. Kaya na-excite tayo sa Davao. Kaya na-excite tayo sa Katarman. Ang daming buhay na kailangan abutin. Pastor Lawrence is doing a great work in Katarman. Maupay nga aga sa inatalan, mga Katarmananon. Kadamo pa sa nihihimuon sa ginoo sa atong bungto. Kung kita magburublig, kung kita magkasarayo, kadamo sa nihihimuon sa ginoo. Pinaagi sa mga tao, may kasing-kasing, nga mamati, ng sumunod sa mga pulong sa Diyos. Do the work of the evangelist. That's practical application. Another practical application. Keep your eye on the crown. Alam mong may katapusan to, pero katulad ng karera, kung gusto mo makatapos sa karera, gusto mo makatapos sa badminton tournament, tinan mo palagi yung trophy, yung medal, yung crown na mapapasayo, dahil ito'y tinapos mong maigi. Kaya sabi ni Paul, I'm already poured out like a drink offering. Ibig sabihin, tapos na ang buhay ko. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved His appearing. Timothy, ngayon pa lang, in my dungeon, nakikita ko na ang spada ng uh, Romanong pupugot sa akin, pero hindi yung kinang ng spada ang bumubulag sa akin. Ang bumubulag sa aking mata ay ang kinang ng corona ng katuwiran, the crown of righteousness na ilalagay ng aking ama, ng aking Panginoon sa aking ulo, pagpasok ko ng kanyang karian At ito hinanda niya para sa akin at para sa iyo at para sa lahat na naniniwalang meron ding katapusan ng lahat ng kapaitan at pagdurusa ng mundong ito. This is very practical. Have an eschatological mindset. Have a mindset that believes in the end of days. Hindi ang, mundo, ang buhay ay patuloy lang na pagragasa ng mundane at paulit-ulit ng mga bagay. May katapusan ng lahat ng bagay. And one day, the Lord will welcome us into His kingdom and the crown of righteousness shall be upon us. My friend, keep your eye on the crown. 
And lastly, keep the treasure of friendship. It is a practical lesson na binibigay sa atin ng banal na spirito. If we would like to be sustained in our faith, of course, God is the one that sustains it, but God makes use of this human privilege called friendship. Si Apostle Paul, sa kanyang mga huling araw, sinulatan niya si Timothy. In a very tender tone, do your best to come to me soon. And sabi niya, when you come, please bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Verse 21, Timothy, do your best to get here before winter. Sa paglubog ng araw ng buhay ni Apostle Paul, in the sunset of his life, literally and figuratively, winter was coming. Parating na ang tag sa Rome. Napunta kami ni ng misis ko si Rose sa Rome, September. Malamig na. Presipin mo kung abutan ka ng, ng December or January kung saan talagang tagyelo, talagang manginginig ka. Prehigit sa cloak, sa balabal na hinihingi ni Paul kay Timothy. Ang hinihingi ni Paul ay ang presensya ng kaibigan niya, ng kanyang anak, na si Timothy. Ito'y dakilang gift na binibigay sa atin ng Diyos. And that's why the church is really a gift from the Lord, my friend. Dahil dito mo makikilala ang best of friends mo. Kaya ang huling mga verses ng 2 Timothy chapter 4, puro pangalan ang sinasambit ni Apostle Paul. More than any other of his epistles dito sa 2 Timothy, talagang ibinuhos na ni Apostle Paul ang mga pangalan. Of course, nandun na rin yung mga nang loko sa kanya, yung mga nang traidor sa kanya, yung mga nang iwan sa kanya, pero kukunti lang yun. Mas marami yung mga taong itinangi niya sa kanyang puso. Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you because he is useful to me in ministry. Alam mo si Mark sa kasi sa kasi Paul nagtampuhan yan. Pero nung in the twilight of Paul's life, sabi niya, dali mo si Mark, miss ko na siya. Greet Prissa in another version, Priscilla. Greet Prissa and Aquila, the household of Onesiphorus, Erastus, Trophimus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus, Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brothers. Na kung naghanap ka ng pangalan ng baby mo, yun, pwede kang humanap sa mga, mga Greek names na naririto sa harap mo. But my friends, my point is this. I have been in the bedside of people who were dying. And believe you me, hindi hahanapin ng isang taong nag-aagaw buhay ang kanyang bank book. Hindi niya hahanapin ang kanyang stock certificates. Hindi niya hahanapin ang sales report kung ilan ang benta nila sa araw na yun. Alam mo kung man palaging hinahanap ng mga taong nag-aagaw buhay? Ang asawa, ang mga anak, ang mga kapatid. Dalalam nila, all the material things hindi nila mabibitbit. But love will last forever. Treasure that friendship, my friend. But let me end with this. Of all the friendships that you can ever have, let me point you to your one true friend. And his name is Jesus. Paul would say in 2 Timothy chapter 4, At my first defense, no one came to stand by me. But all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Oh, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into His heavenly kingdom. To Him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I love that verse 17. But the Lord stood by me. In your walk of life, kapatid, yes, nandiyan ang asawa mo, nandiyan ang nanay, tatay mo, nandiyan ang pastor mo, 
Nandiyan ang mga kapatid mo, nandiyan ang mga ka-churchmates, ng mga katag-DJ. Thank God for those treasures of friends. But there will be times in your life. It will just be between you and God. There will be moments in your life that you will feel deserted. You will look around, wala yung pastor. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And you're struggling with depression and panic attack and the pains in your body and the fear of death. Gusto mong tawagan yung disciple, nakakahiya naman, alas stress ng madaling araw. In those moments, no. That God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is standing beside you. That God alone is the person that will never be limited by time or distance. God alone is never limited by space. He is there standing by you and giving you strength. So I point you to Jesus. And I pray that as we have gone through the four chapters of 2 Timothy. Today, we will truly have proven unto ourselves God is the sustainer of our heritage of faith. When everyone else has walked away, when everyone else has chosen to turn their backs on you, and there are moments when you feel like parang nasayang lang, kawang lang katong imong imong gipanghing kamot sa kinabuhi. Sayang lang lahat ng mga pinaghirapan mo. My friend, nothing of your efforts will never be in vain because in all of those moments, all your sacrifices, all your sufferings, all your endurings of pain, Jesus was there beside you. He was the one that sustained you. He was the one that strengthened you. He was the one that made the presence of God so real in your heart. And so today, we will receive the communion. But we will sing this song of praise first. And after this, we will close in prayer.
Hallelujah. Salamat, Brother Matthew, for that song. Ramdam ko galing sa puso mo, kapatid. Patuloy namin pinagdarasal si Sister Ashley. And Sister Ash, the faith that you have right now is a faith through generations. And it's a faith that continues on despite your present tribulations. Kahit kailan hindi nagkulang ang Panginoon sa atin, kapatid. Biyaya niya ay palaging laan sa kanyang mga anak. Kaya sa mga panahon na uh, akala natin merong hangganan ang pag-ibig ng Diyos, malaman mo lang, kapatid, noon pa man, inibig ka na ng Diyos. The reason why we can have that assurance of faith is because the body and the blood of Christ was given unto us. This is the seal of the new and everlasting covenant. Ang katiyakang meron tayo na forever tayo ay makatatayo. Taas noo, buo ang loob. Kailanman ang utak ay hindi magagapi ng kadiliman. At handa ang ating mga kamay magsilbi. Dahil alam natin, sinelyuhan na ng Panginoong Heso Kristo ang kalakasang ipinangako niya sa atin. Ang buhay na ganap na ipinangako niya sa atin. The Bible records that on the night when Christ was betrayed, He gathered the disciples in that supper and He took a piece of bread and He broke it. And He said, This is my body that will be broken for you. Eat of this in remembrance of me. Shall we now partake of the bread? In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Nagpasalamat siya sa kanyang ama. Ibinigay niya ang kopeta doon sa kanyang mga disipulo. At sabi niya, ito ay ang aking dugo. Natatagas mula sa aking katawan para sa kapatawaran ng inyong mga kasalanan. But ito rin ang dugong si Selyo sa bago, sa bagong tipan ng inyong pananampalataya. Whenever you drink of this, drink this in memory of me. May we now partake of the drink. Praise God. Every time we get to partake of the sacrament of the Last Supper, we are reminded that truly our faith will forever be sustained. And that sustenance is not incumbent on your capacity to sustain it. That's the most beautiful part of it. Dahil alam natin kung aasa ka sa sarili mo, bibigay at bibigay ka sooner or later, at one point or another. Merong pagbagsak, merong pagkalimot, merong pagkadapa, kahit ang magigiting na mananampalataya. But we thank God that this sustenance is authored by God Himself. This faith that we have, this persuasion of the will, comes from God. Siya ang nagbigay ng regalo ng pananampalataya so that we will be persuaded to believe in Him. 
Kapatid, would you like to put your faith, to place your faith in the Lord? Now is your moment, mga kapatid. Because the Word of God has declared it to you. This is a faith through generations. This is a faith in words and in actions. And this is a faith despite the troubles and attritions. This faith is God's gift to you. But just like any gift, the Lord requires of you only one thing, an openness. The humility of heart to admit before the Lord that you are sorely in need of His grace. Are you willing to humbly bow before the Lord today and ask Him to take over your life from this moment on at ibigay mo at i-dedicate mong buhay mo para sa Kanya? Why did you pray this prayer with me? Father, Alam ko po, Panginoon, na sa aking kalakasan ako ay naging limitadong nilalang. Marami akong mga likong gawa, marami akong maling desisyon, marami akong niloob na hindi ayon sa inyong kalooban. Humihingi po ako ng patawad sa inyo, Panginoon. At banal na spirito, akin pong hinihingi ang inyong paglinis sa aking gulagulanit at sira-sira at basag-basag na buhay. Ang Panginoong Isus, akin pong tinatanggap ang paglilinis ng inyong banal na dugo sa aking pagkatao, katawan, isip, at spirito. Ngayong araw, Panginoon, nananampalataya po ako dahil binigyan niyo po ako ng regalo ng pananampalataya. Ibinibigay ko po sa inyo ang aking buhay at akin pong kayong pagsisilbihan, dadasalan, akin po kayong pupurihin at sasambihin kayo lamang po mula ngayon at magpakailanman sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my friend, for giving your life to Jesus. Kung gusto mong lalo tigit na makilala ng malalim ang Panginoon, be a disciple of Jesus. Learn to know His commandments. And we in Lighthouse, we are so excited to walk you through the path of discipleship. So please, Leave us a message, a private message niyo po, or pwede kayo mag-chat box. Babalikan po namin yan after the service, and we will keep in touch with you. Lighthouse family, Citygate family, salamat for your patience. Thank you for your attention. Lift up your hands now for the benediction, and may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance towards you. And may the God of peace just pour upon you His everlasting shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. For He, our God, is the sustainer of this rich heritage of faith. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you, Lighthouse family. Do come join us for our, for our face-to-face service. Kung kayo pa'y komportable na, come join us one of these Sundays. Meanwhile, stay healthy, stay happy. You are the light of the world.